Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 74, we're going to take a look at the Wilson Tuna R8. But specifically, we're going to look at V6 and V9, which is the 6S and 7. Now, it's going to be a mini review of some 6S and 7. So it's not just for R8 owners. Uh, anybody who uses the 6S and 7 might enjoy it. And we've got some other interesting stuff to talk about as well. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. I've got an update from my vintage tube supplier in, in Ukraine. Here's what he wrote. Hello Jim, unfortunately my family and I still in occupied Melitopol. I can't evacuate. The Russian military does not let anyone out. The city has a problem with supplies of nearly everything, including medicine. I'm ready to leave everything, the house, my warehouse of tubes, and leave. But I can't. We can only wait and hope that the Ukrainian army will liberate us. Regards, V. For those of you who don't know where Melitopol is, it's located southeast in the southeast of Ukraine, not far from the Crimea Peninsula and the Black Sea. Okay, from that humanitarian crisis, we should talk about the world tube supply. Now, I know vacuum tubes are of a minor concern compared to the suffering of the people of Ukraine. But for many of us, music and tube amplification is a refuge from the difficulties of everyday life. So most of you know that almost all the reissued tubes from New Sensor of New York come from the old reflector plant in Saratov, Russia. This includes the brand names Mullard, their original brand name Electroharmonix, Svetlana, Tungsol, Tesla, Gold Lion, etc., etc. None of these tubes is anything like the original, but they did fill a need for cheap tubes. Well, from one early report I've just received, the Russian Federation is banning exports of numerous items, and tubes appear to be on the list. So what was already a very tight market is now going to be impossible for many manufacturers of new tube amps. Here, at Melatone Kits, we're going to be fine because I chose to design preamps and power amps that use tubes that are still commonly available in quantity as new old stock. In fact, if you're thinking of buying a new tube amp or even a vintage amp, take a look at the tubes it uses before you buy. Check the availability. I've already seen rush buying on my power tubes to the point that I'm almost out of stock of EL 34s and 6550s. Okay, so a customer recently said he wanted to try the Melt 6SN7 GT in the R8. For those of you that don't know, the R8 is a, a really well made four power tube integrated all tube amp that's very affordable. Now I've got other videos in which I talk about the R8. There's lots of stuff about it online. So normally I wouldn't recommend the lower spec 6SN7 GT in any modern amp, but I said I'd do a trial and see how they worked out in the R8. And wow, they sounded great. So here's a mini review of this tube. In fact, we're going to do we're going to do four 6SN7s. Now, I kept all the tubes. There's nine tubes in the R8, so I kept the, the power tubes, everything identical except for the 6SN7. There's a pair of 6SN7s. So the power tube I used was the lovely vintage, true vintage Svetlana 6550C. This is a lower powered KT88, which works wonderfully in the R8. And in the 6SL7 slot, I used the, the Sylvania, the vintage Sylvania. 
There's a pair of those. That's the voltage gain. And the 6SN7 is in the um, driver phase inverter um, stage of the amplifier. And that's the tube that, that I rolled. That's the only tube I rolled. I kept the, all the other tubes identical. So we'll start with the a recent discovery. This is the photon. Let me get it up on camera for you. Um, close equivalent to the 6SN7GTB. It's the one with the bottom plate getter. I've talked about this tube before. It really is quite a sleeper. But how did they sound? Now remember, I'm reviewing this tube in my system with my equipment, with the R8, with the specific tubes I mentioned, and I'm reviewing it in the driver phase inverter stage. Now, the review information will be applicable to a certain extent to any, any amplification stage that you put the 6SN7, because the driver stage is just that. It's bringing up the voltage to drive the amplifier tubes, right? Okay, so how do they sound? Well, the bass was good plus. Mid-range, I started off thinking this, this is good plus, it's punchy, it's the three C's, crisp, clean, and clear, and I thought, stop resisting. This, actually, I really like the mid-range, so I, 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 up, I upped it to very good. Treble was good plus, the three C's, Good detail, good plus soundstage for a budget, um, very affordable 6SN7. The Photon really punches above its weight. Okay, what's next? Well, next is the Rogers Sylvania 6SN7 GTB. This is the tube that normally goes into that uh, Svetlana Gold set. And like all of the Sylvania 6SN7s, the GT, the GTA, GTB, the 6SL7s, uh, early and later and mil-spec production, it has the Sylvania house sound, which is a warm, rich sound uh, with good detail. And that's, their engineers must have been targeting that. And of course, a lot of the materials used in similar tubes are going to, grid wire and the coatings is all going to be similar or the same. So it's not surprising that the Svenia tubes that are similar all have that house sound. And I really like it. So I, I do a lot, I recommend a lot of Sylvania tubes. I specialize in them. Okay, but how did the, how did that tube sound? Well, the bass was good plus it was punchy Mid-range was very good. The three C's, very good detail, punchy. Treble was good plus, the three C's. Now, all the tubes I'm reviewing were very low noise and very microphonic. In conclusion, I wrote very good detail plus plus. Very good soundstage. So it's not surprising that in this in this amp, in this position, that that the that I reviewed the um, the Rogers Sylvania tube really well. I mean, I chose it specifically for its properties, for how it sounds in the amp. Uh, for you know that that's the reason why it ended up being recommended. I don't put tubes in sets that I don't like. <laughs> I put the best tubes I can find that are available. Right? That's important to remember. It's going to be even more important to remember moving forward now. Okay, what's next? Okay, up, up next is the really lovely metal, mil-spec, metal base melts tubes. They're from the 1950s. I think I've seen dates well into the 60s for this. This is the common version. It's got, um, it's got two rivets on each plate. It's got the elevated black T plates, and of course, the very, the very lovely um, composite metal base. But how did they sound? Bass was very good. 
a touch forward. Mid-range, I started off thinking, well, this is very good. The three C's, crisp, clean, and clear. And then I wrote very clean and clear, detail, punchy. And I thought, you know what? The mid-range deserves to be excellent. I don't, it's a category I don't use very often, and tubes really have to earn it. And I felt this, the Melts tube earned it. Treble was very good, the three C's. In conclusion, I wrote good detail, very good soundstage. It's not hard to see why the Melt 6SN7 and the, six, the Melt 6SL7, which is also a lovely tube, why people really seek them out. But they're, they're mostly from the 1950s. Um, older tubes tend to have noise issues, so a lot of them are lost in testing. Um, and they're fairly rare, and to find noodled stock is even rarer. So they're expensive tubes for all of those reasons. Up, up next is probably, it is, I think, the most expensive tube I have in the store. And this is a premium version of the tube we just looked at. It's made by Melts, but it's the 1578. So I think it is a higher spec mill spec tube. <laughs> That's a way to describe it. There's not a lot of information online as to what this was used for, but if we look at it closely, maybe we'll get a hint. See this really interesting, well-designed and made mica spacer? Looks like it could take a lot of G's. Ah, this may have been designed for high G applications, which would mean it was already a mil spec tube in its original version, but this could mean it was made for fighter aircraft. And you can always tell the 15, a true 1578, there's lots of people trying to fake this tube. They're worth a small fortune. Um, it's easy to tell it apart from the fakes because look at the plate. It has a whole series of small circular holes in the plate, both sides, Looks very much like the barrel of a machine gun. And it's got a very unique getter. In fact, when I was getting ready to review this tube, I had a good look at the getter for the first time. I thought it was just the standard melts plate getter. Look at the size of the waste chrome, it's huge. Now, I don't know if you can see through the hole. There you go, I think you can see that. It's got a huge circular getter that looks sort of like a a, tire, a metal tire on a metal rim. Really interesting. I've never seen anything like that. Obviously very a custom design for the spec of this tube. Okay, but how did they sound? Very good. Bass was very good. Mid-range was very good. The three C's. Punchy. Treble was very good plus. The three C's. But, in conclusion, this is where it gets interesting. Excellent micro detail. Good um, what did I write here? Hang on a second. I can't read upside down sometimes. Good sense of space. Very good sound stage. Now, what do I mean when I say sense of space? Well, when you get a a recording, you have essentially an attempt by the uh, the musicians, the uh, engineers, and the mix of the recording to create a a live three D presentation. That if 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 they're on the ball um, in in production, that's what they're trying to create is a is a really good live presentation. That's the ultimate goal. For a good recording in most cases. And they're going to want to have the vocals front and center, but they're not going to want to have them bleeding over to the right or left side, or at least not much. They're going to want the drum kit probably back, back center, up and back center, but in older recordings it's often sitting on one side or the other. It's just the way they used to mic them and mix them. In modern rock recordings, you're going to have a guitar on one side, bass on the other side, etc. Now, 
when you have a good sense of space, those vocals are well defined as to where they are in the sound stage. Same goes for the instruments. Um, some instruments, like the cymbals of the drum kit in particular, are really tough to do well, tough to record. Same with the bass notes. So when those are well defined in your 3D image, it's worth talking about because it's tough to it's tough to record it. It's, it's tough to it's tough to to put it lay it down on a record properly. It's tough to pick it up again with a stylus. It's it's just tough, and then it's tough to reproduce at home. So whenever you get that clarity, the definition, the sense of space, it's really worth talking about. So it's not surprising that this ultra low noise um, mil spec tube. Now the reason why I say ultra low noise is because it's really well braced inside the glass with that fancy mica. So it's not surprising that it's not going to have a lot of noise. And that helps certain things come out in the detail. And then it's just, sometimes it's just luck, the design of the tube to meet the electrical specs that they had just happened to work really well in, you know, high quality audio. Okay, so what do we learn from this? Well, we've learned that all of these tubes sound good. <laughs> um, now, I rarely choose tubes that suck big time. Some reviewers like to do that. I don't. I just, I like to point out tubes that are good, very good, or superlative. <laughs> because that's what we want to listen to, right? Um, so you can get, with the Photon, you can get great sound for very little money. For the standard set, the Rogers Sylvania tube does really well. This is a big step up. But they're also a lot more expensive and they're rare and hard to find. And this is a huge, it's not a, this, the 1578, let me get that 1578 up. This rare tube is not that much better than the standard melts, but it is a little bit. And maybe even a little bit more than a little bit, but it's an incredible amount of money. So you can get mostly there. In fact, you can get, you can get 90% of the way to really good sound with these tubes that are very affordable. You can go a little bit more with the, the standard melts and a little bit more with the premium melts. Okay, uh, <laughs> I hope we learned something from that. Okay, what's been going on over at Melatone Kits? Well, work continues on new prototype kit amps, but the store has been incredibly busy. So I'm making slow progress. But have a look at what came in for the prototype headphone amplifier that Charles is working on. Now, he's doing the design work. In fact, this is going to be his first solo design. But I have the fun of sourcing the parts. <laughs> so, we were just talking about these vintage spets. And have a look. Now, this is... Look at the comparison in size. This is a... A power tube with the winged or flying C logo. I don't know if you can see it there. That's the classic Svetlana logo. These are from 1984. In fact, um, the whole lot came in from 1984. And this is a small power tube that was designed for radios and TVs. Now, because a head and because a headphone amplifier doesn't need a lot of power, but it does need good sound, good clean sound. I went searching for something that was available as new old stock by a quality manufacturer that I trust. And have a look at how well made these these tubes are. Now this is the in the EL84 envelope, right? The tall nine pin, standard nine pin. But look at that plate. I mean it's and can you see through there? You can see the grid winding. Look how robust that is and neatly made it is. It's just gorgeous. And we're going to talk more about this tube as the prototype gets developed. In fact, we were just talking about the supplier in the Ukraine and the trouble he's he's having. These were his, I, probably his last shipment out. In fact, he's such a good guy, uh, he knew the danger that his business was in and the country was in. 
he got, I had, I had two fairly large orders with him and he got them moving that day or the next day and they made it out. I had other orders, um, in which the suppliers just didn't get moving and they haven't arrived. They may be lost. They may be lost forever, unfortunately. That's the way things go. Have a look at these. Now, many of you know that I carry all of the all of the parts that I use in my kit amps, I carry in the store. You can buy everything that goes into the kit amps, all the quality parts that I spend hours sourcing, you can buy them in the store. And I also stock a lot of the tools that I like to use in my business. And this is a standard Dremel shaft, 1 8 or the metric version of that. It'll work. It's just slightly smaller than an eighth of an inch. And this is a brass wire wheel. Now, if you're going to use any kind of a wire tool in a Dremel or any kind of machine, you need to wear safety glasses. These little wires do fly off occasionally. But this is just fabulous for cleaning, not for these pens because they're mint. But if you have um, corroded or oxidized pins, brass in a Dremel is a wonderful thing for cleaning them up. And best of all, they're not expensive. Now, they don't last forever. They do wear out and you got to change them occasionally. Anyways, there's a whole series of brushes. There's, um, there's a large broom and there's a small broom. I like to use the wheels for the two pins and the brushes are great for getting into corners that need to be cleaned up on, on vintage amps. Okay, what else came in? A nice little pile of, re of really nice looking Sylvania 6SN7 GTBs. I haven't tested them yet. They'll be in the store hopefully later this weekend. And the Sylvania 6SN7s are a high demand tube. And I struggle at times to keep them in stock. So it's nice to say, <laughs> I'm celebrating that they're coming into stock, but by the end of the week, they'll be out of stock again, unfortunately. But this is just, I would say this is one of the nicest standard sounding um, 6SN7s out there. And we talked about the house sound earlier. Okay, well, if you stay to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. And there is a secret code that's easy to figure out. Some of you have. Take advantage of it if you know what it is. There's only one secret code in the store, so don't go looking for others. And I have um, $20 flat rate shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after you take your discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Bells and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.